Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space, where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome back to another episode of the Prog Talks. I'm your host, Dario. And as always, before we jump into today's uh, topic and welcome today's guests, uh, please get us a cup of coffee or tea. It's very much appreciated and helps us um, keeping the prog talks and the prog space alive. And uh, yeah, now I welcome, actually more or less welcome back, uh, John Beckhold from the Pattern Seeking Animals, uh, who I had the pleasure with uh, talking to um, last year, uh, two years ago with uh, the broadcast with my buddy Randy. And now, uh, John, you're back with a new album already. <laughs> yes, yeah, glad to be here and talking about it. Yeah, I know we just keep churning out the music. <laughs> well, there was not that that much else to do in the last two years. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's one thing. I'm, I I work out of home anyway, and my studio is here as well. So uh, things got stretched out. This album is coming out later than we had planned to. Uh, but for obvious reasons, there was trouble getting into studios to record some stuff. So there was more time to work on it. Uh, but yeah, that's what, I, that's what I was doing for the most of all of the pandemic was writing and recording music. So, yeah, uh, we, we see the beautiful cover artwork, artwork uh, behind you. Um, mm -hmm. The album is called Only Passing Through. It's, right. the, it's the third uh, pattern seeking animals album in uh, quite a short time, I would say. and. Uh, Well, the funny thing is, um, it kind of took over from Spock's Beard because there hasn't been anything since Noise Floor. And then that was in 2018. And then 2019 was the self-titled Pattern Seeking Animals debut. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, now, as you said, you keep turning out the, the music. <laughs> right. right. Um, but I guess that was not really the plan when you started out. When I remember uh, our last talk, that it just uh, happened that you 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 wanted to to record some songs, and then accidentally the band came about, right? Correct. Yeah, it was just to get some songs because I, I write all the time, whether I'm writing for anyone or, or not. And I had a group of songs that I wanted to go into the studio with with real drums because I just get tired of hearing my own drum programming for the demos, and then from there. The stuff started turning out really, really great. And we contacted Inside Out to see if there was, you know, the record label to see if there's any interest. And they said, oh, yeah, we'd like to put the album out. So all of a sudden we said, okay, we're a band. <laughs> you know, it's kind of, the, kind of the opposite of the way most of the times you're a band. You, you know, you, you find musicians and you get together in your garage or basement and start thrashing out tunes and playing gigs. And then you record. So this is kind of, kind of backwards. <laughs> um. Yeah, but when we when we last talked about the previous album, uh, Prehensile Tales, mm -hmm. that was right at the more or less at the start of the pandemic, I believe. Right. Uh, um, uh, yeah, the the beginning of uh, 2020. Um, so more or yeah. less two two years ago now. Um, mm -hmm. So the I guess the 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 conditions under which the first two albums were were written and recorded were probably a bit, a bit different uh, uh, than now with the new well, album. Well, a, a little bit, uh, and not so much. It's mostly in the logistics. Like I said, getting people together to record. We do any most of the recording remotely anyway. You know, because everyone Ted lives in New York and Dave lives up north, and and. Uh, And then there were some issues getting into the studio to record drums because of uh, you know the obvious reasons with the pandemic. So that put us back a bit. And then the other thing, which uh, <laughs> what I found out is that uh, vinyl, you know, a couple of years, two or three years ago, you needed a you know two month lead time to manufacture the vinyl. And we was ready to just about ready to turn the album in. I go to the record company. They said, "Oh no, now because there's so much demand for vinyl and and there's not that many people making it, there's a six month wait." So this album, if we didn't have to wait for the vinyl, this album probably would have been out, uh, you know, last fall or something. But it's fine. It's it's fine. It's coming out now. It's all good. 
Um, yeah, actually, I just uh, had the opportunity to talk to your label mate, Hans Lundi, in the keyboard player of Kaipa, um, right. who are about to uh, release their 14th album. And, I, I, heard, uh, <laughs> I heard some of it. It's really good. Yeah, I, I saw they released one one single from it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I like that, that band. Yeah, w- wonderful band. And he also said that the album was ready basically a year ago. And then the yeah. label uh, Inside Out said there's so much music waiting to be released that they're right. like, they have really to plan the the, the release date. Uh, um, yeah, oh, well, yeah. So we're, we're going to put out the, the interview with uh, Hans um, in a written form. I will transcribe it. And But yeah, uh, actually, most of the Proc Talks episodes I am doing these days is about albums that are about to come out uh-huh. <laughs> a couple of days yeah. la- later. But I mean, your album um, only passing through is out since last week, April first, right? right. Yeah. Just about a week ago tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so how 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 has the initial reception has been? It's been uh, pretty good. We've gotten some good reviews because obviously when you when you record an album and write. You're very subjective. You you have no way of knowing how it's going to be received because a lot of times you, you, you'll write something and think, this is the best thing I've ever done. And, you know, the audience might be, eh, that's okay. And then other <laughs> things you think, oh, I'm not too crazy about this song and everyone will be, you know, crazy about it. So we've gotten some good response. We're getting a lot more response, which is good. I think our audience has opened up a little bit more. It's a little wider. I think after you know each album that happens, and uh, yeah, like I said, some good reviews, and um, yeah, it's it's all good so far. Um, was was there any any difference for you in 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 the like inspirations that you took into the songwriting, maybe both musically or also uh, what you were writing about topically in the lyrics um, uh, compared to the previous albums this time around? Not really. I I write the as far as lyrically, I write from the same. I virtually never write from real life experiences. I I think more in terms of like a, uh, you know, a novelist or short story writer or whatever. I just come up with situations. You know, like you're writing a fictional, you know, fictional movie or something like that. I know most writers I know write from personal experience. Ted, uh, who's you know has a couple songs on the album, he writes from personal experience. But to me, I, I'm just more interested in um, a cool story. And I always think my life's so boring. Why would anyone want? Why, why would I want to write about it? But uh, no, so lyrically, it's just writing from the same perspective there. My initial reaction, my initial thought in uh, writing and producing this album was to make it more, just raise the excitement level a bit not go into so many longer, slower passages, just to make everything so it moved along really, you know, the flip flowed really nicely and uh, kept the energy up for the whole album. Uh, so th- just a little bit of a conscious effort there. Then when I was in the early writing of it, uh, I started listening to, I, I, first of all, I listened to a ton of different types of music from all over the map and all over the world. I just love it. And I started listening to Mexican and South American pop and folk and classical stuff. And the instrumentation was great. So as I'm sitting here in the pandemic, uh, I, I thought to myself, I'd always wanted some of those instruments. So I would search the internet and look for great deals on like, you know, Chirango or Ron Roca or Biwela, other South American, in- South American instruments. So I'd order them. And uh, when I got some good deals on them, and I started incorporating some of the sounds into this album's uh, uh, production, which I think gives a little different flavor, and I like I like playing those instruments too. They're just fun because it's a different thing. Uh, wonderful, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two things I w- I would like to follow up with. Uh, first is the the instrumentation, and uh, which also uh, leads to yeah d- different choices in in uh, arranging songs and stuff, and and also um, I think on the long on the long song, what's the name? Time has a way. Time has a way. Yeah. There's also some some trumpet and stuff. Did did you have any guest musicians doing these, or is it all you as the producer <laughs> slash songwriter, main songwriter slash multi instrumentalist? No, the, the um for that song on the previous album we used trumpet on a few songs. This one I just used it on that the long one. Time has a way. Trumpet player who's local here, a great player named John Fumo. Uh, we did a session with him and he played trumpets and flugelhorn and other a couple other brass instruments here and there and uh, we built it up so it's 
trumpet, but then it sounds more like a brass section in other places. So that was fun. And then the violin, we only used it on two songs on this album, uh, Time Has Away and Rock, Paper, Scissors. And that's a musician. Her name is Rini. She's an Indian player who uh, is with, uh, familiar with contemporary music, but also has a, ba a background in Indian you know, classical and folk music. I, I just like the style she brings to it. And she lives in New York, so we, we recorded her um, remotely. But yeah, those were the two outside musicians at this time. Although I did have some backing vocals, some friends of mine, and a couple songs. And uh, there is one song left over, a version of it from uh, the first album, which we didn't use. But then I rewrote the song, but used some of the parts. So there's also cello and bassoon on the, on the song only passing through. Even though it's a new version, I used some of the uh, the real cello and bassoon from the original version. <laughs> so I think that's it for the... Uh, you know the, the guest musicians yeah otherwise the the the, the band lineup uh, really remained intact right with yeah, yes with, with ted leonard on vocals and guitars um yep. then dave maris on bass and mm -hmm. jimmy keegan on drums and it's so funny when, when i listen to the album and there's like some some fun stuff going on on the drums i will always see uh, Jimmy's face smiling from ear to ear oh, yeah, because yeah. it's so he has so much fun playing this. <laughs> yeah, and the way he he plays great, and you know, besides he's a great singer too, which really is great for the backing vocals and everything. But yeah, when he plays, I just love the the vitality he brings to it. And he, what I really like is he hits the drums hard and he just lays into them, and I just he's great technically. So yeah, I couldn't ask for more. Um, wonderful. Now I um. I kind of lost my 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 the other question that uh, that that came up. Um, well, let, let, let's go with another one then sure. that I wrote wrote, wrote down uh, earlier. Um, also, when I was listening to the album it, um, to the long track, um, time has a way. Uh, there was some really funny keyboard sounds uh, in the like key solo sections. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was wondering, uh, how do you go about um, choosing keyboard sounds, especially for lead and 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 solo stuff? Well, uh, a lot of a lot of times, you, you know, your basics uh, like piano and organ, you can only go so far with changing them so they just sound like basic piano or organ with different different settings or different approaches so there's not much you can do with it mellotron similar uh when it gets to the synth sounds that's where it allows you because you can change so many of the parameters and come up with your own type of sounds a and that's where i like to kind of draw from uh, like the, you know the classic old school instruments like piano b3 or whatever because there's all sorts of great up-to-date modern synths where you can change the parameters so i i i've always as much as i like you know, the, the standard mini moog sounds and everything you hear in, in prog music you know it's just great because it's it's classic stuff uh, i wanted to do something which was more just something uh, different you know away from the norm you would hear in it so i would sit there and you know tweak sounds and come up with you know stuff until it didn't really sound necessarily like you're you know, am I listening to a synth what is this thing right here but it doesn't <laughs> sound like your normal thing you'd get out of a mini mode for example which i yeah, which i was yeah, pretty yeah. yeah i was pretty specific on wanting to do <laughs> yeah i think i had the, the, exactly that reaction so is this really a synth <laughs> yeah well there are there are a couple sounds uh, in fact there's one uh in time has a way there's like a little almost like an arabic sounding breakdown Doom, doom, doom. And there's a synth solo in there. It's 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 a uh, a sound I came up with, but buried in there is a flute mellotron played really high as just another voice in there. But you don't even realize that's what it is because I mess with the sounds. And I, I just love combining synth sounds to come up with something which is unique and um, gets the point across. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, now, 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 actually, my, my question is back, came back into uh -huh. my oh, mind. It's um, back. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we we were you were uh, 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 talking about or, or you were um, mentioning that uh, a couple of the songs on the album were written by uh, Ted, right? Um, so so uh, and I think that that is uh, that is new, right? The the two two other albums were mostly you. Uh, Ted wrote on the first album. There was a song called uh, 
No Lands Man, which he wrote the lyrics for. Uh, but this album, the, the one song on the album, Much Ado, is a song he's had for a while. And I, was, I wanted to record it for the first album. And, and at the time, his band Enchant had already re- played it a few times, and they were thinking about putting it on the album. So he thought, well, let's just hold off on it. And I said, okay, because I really love that song. And, and Prehensile Tales came about, and he said, I'm not sure about it again. So for this album, I just started recording it. I, I came up with a, <laughs> uh, you know, with a part with my version of it. And he was into it, and he said, well, it looks like it's not going to be in an Enchant album, so let's go for it. So, um, yeah, I'm happy the way that turned out because I love the song. And then he also has, he wrote one of the bonus tracks, I'm Not All Right, which is another one. So, yeah, I'd like to get him writing more. But, you know, like I said, Ted's one of those guys where he, uh, like we talked about earlier, where he writes from personal experiences. You know, when things are really bad in life, like, you know, death and divorce and bad things happening. And he's happy right now, so he's just not writing because he likes to write from, you know, things that happen in his life like that. So I, I keep bugging him to write more. So hopefully in the next album... I can uh, persuade him to write some more because he's a great writer. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, you mentioned the one of the bonus tracks. There's two bonus tracks and um, mm-hmm. they, they, um, they, they have, oops, uh, they had, a, they have, a, um, like the feel is different to the album. So it's kind of, it, it, it is kind of uh, understandable that they are, they are labeled as bonus tracks. Uh, yeah. Would you, would you say the same? Sure. Oh, yeah. Especially just Another Day at the Beach, which is a straight ahead pop song, pretty much, with a few little twists in it. And I, it's, that's someone I actually I wrote that with a friend of mine who I've been writing with forever a few years ago and wanted to try a version of it in this band uh, because I knew we had to come up with the, the couple bonus tracks, you know, from the label. And I thought that I, I actually toyed with putting this on the main album, but when it came right down to it, didn't quite fit with the other material, although I, it turned out really great. I, I'm just happy the way it turned out. And also, when we were uh, considering whether to put that on the main album or not, I thought it'd be a good idea to have another bonus track in case we did. And that's when Ted came up with uh, I'm Not All Right. So he worked up a version of that. And then the album, as it stood without those two, is about 51 minutes long. And I just, I'm so tired of these albums where they squeeze every last second onto a CD and you get these 70 minute albums and they're just, it's too much for me as a listener. So I thought, well, if it's too much for me. It's going to be too much for other people listening. So I wanted to keep the album around 51 minutes. So it was actually pretty an easy, an easy call to move those two to the bonus track <laughs> territory because I don't think they would have fit with the rest of the album. And uh, I didn't, didn't want to have it there just to, for the sake of it. <laughs> yeah, find, find it, as as I mentioned, I was just talking to Hans from from Kaipa, and uh-huh. uh, yeah, Kaipa albums tend to uh, well, actually, um, all of the 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 early albums of the of the second incarnation, kind mm-hmm. of beginning of the two thousands, with Roy Nistol still playing. Uh, with, right. uh, they were they were all seventy nine minutes long, like like oh, just yeah. just whatever you can press on a CD, and uh, then. At one point, uh, Hans decided to make them a little bit shorter, like between yeah. 60 and 70. And and yeah. I, I did notice that while uh, working my way through the discography um, leading up to the interview, that I, mm-hmm. I did. It was noticeable that uh, that there's like, even though you would think ah oh, 60, 70 mu- minutes is still long, those those last 10 minutes, it's like. I don't, I don't know this there's they they make it feel a, a lot longer and right like like if you have like 60 to 7 70 especially with with I I would say uh, it also depends on the music I mean if you have like uh, uh like some stuff like Meshuga or uh, um car bomb or some crazy shit I don't know uh mm-hmm. Dillinger escape plan uh, like 80 minutes of that would be a, <laughs> a bit yeah, challenging. It, and yeah, and Ka- Kaipa's music is so light and uplifting most of the time that it right. that it's not that big of a deal, I would say. Mm. Yeah, I think for me, just I, I get tired when I listen to music. If an album, and even though an album is great, after it hits that 45, 50 minute mark, I'm starting to lose interest because there's only if if you're listening, obviously you can just pick out a song, listen to it any time, but listening to something as an album, it just starts to get a bit tedious to me, no matter how good it is after you hit that 45, 50 minute mark. And maybe it's just because when I grew up, 
all the albums, you know, those classic prog albums, what's close to the edge, what's it, 38 minutes or something like that. And so maybe that's just because when I grew up and that to me is, a, you know, an album length, uh, I, I really wanted this time to make everything concise. And when you start out wanting to make an album shorter for editing purposes, you get rid of extraneous parts in songs. Uh, you know, there's a part of there's a song said the stranger. And uh, on this album, and there's a verse and a chorus in the middle. And at one point, there was two verses and two choruses in the middle. And I listened to that and thought, I'm not really saying anything new in this section of the song. So we just chopped out that second verse and chorus, and it dropped a minute off of the, a minute, 20 seconds or whatever off of the song. And to me, the song was a lot tighter and flowed a lot better. So I think when you decide to make things more concise, you you think in that terms when you know, when producing and editing and you do you throw out parts of songs and whole songs themselves which may not be great or they don't really add to the whole you know the overall vibe of the song or the album uh yeah that that that's uh that's a really really cool uh uh an understandable thing especially when you mention also the 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 classics um mm -hmm. which which of course had the time restraints of of, of the vinyl sure. and um um yeah but what i also wanted to ask you and we we also did talk about it last uh, last time um mm -hmm. was playing live and right. i just i just went onto your facebook page and i saw you you're you're rehearsing and you you mm -hmm. actually got more people into the live lineup of the band um and we were talking about ross fest already uh, two years ago which right. got cancelled obviously yeah. but uh, uh i think now you are um yeah you 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 should play play it this time right Hopefully. oh yeah no we're <laughs> actually rehearsing this week and i'm not in the live band it's not, ah, not okay. me though. yeah <laughs> and the reason Yeah, we're scheduled for Rosfest on April 17th. Uh, in fact, that's what we're rehearsing for this week. And then the cruise to the edge a couple weeks later, you know, the beginning yeah, of the right. night. Yeah, and the reason I'm not in the band, a couple reasons I've never been um, a fan of playing live. And the older I get, it's just physically daunting. Uh, and also, as far as I'm not a good enough musician to play with those guys. I play enough keyboards and guitar to write with, but I'm hardly even close to the ability of the other guys in the band. So uh, we talked about, uh, you know, getting other people to fill in, be able to play the parts, because a lot of the, the songs are pretty intricate and uh, deep. So we got two players, both multi-instrumentalists, a keyboard player uh, uh, named Dennis Atlas, who's just a monster player. Um, uh, he can also sing great. And then Walter Eno, who's playing every, he's playing, uh, keyboards guitars mandolin electric sitar and singing so we got these two phenomenal players who just can play any style and almost any instrument between them and so it fills out the band really nicely for a live situation in fact when we're done i'm heading over to the rehearsal studio so <laughs> yeah <laughs> so are you gonna uh be like a the, like a musical director in the background and tell them what they need to do better <laughs> no in fact i i'm just there hanging out jimmy is more the musical director as far as organizing and getting stuff done and everyone just learned their parts from the album and i'm there to you know offer an opinion but my thought was because i'm not because the last time i played live was what 30 years ago something like this forever ago because again i never liked it so that's not within my world That's it's not my world to think in terms of playing live. So my thought was just to back off and let these guys who all just play all the time, all the time, and they're just seasoned pros, every single one of them. I said, why am I going to hop in and, uh, you know, put my stamp on it? I just told them, you know, if you want to do it exactly like the record, great. If you want to add some new parts or play something different or a different whatever, go for it. I'm I'm totally behind it. So I just sit there and listen. And then every once in a while, I'll pop in and say, uh, you know, Oh yeah, that synth sound is cool, but it, you know you should you maybe play it into this section. But that's even rare. I might offer like one or two suggestions a day. I just sit back and listen, and it's all good. <laughs> and and uh, get the chance to to hang out with friends. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're actually um, we're rehearsing in a recording studio, 
So we just hang out and, you know, of course, you know, a bunch of guys would just goof off, you know, tell jokes or whatever. But yeah, it's good to listen to them play. And um, yeah, it's just coming together really nicely. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, last time when you were on the broadcast uh, and we started off with with a section that we don't he- have here on the Proc Talks, uh, what's mm-hmm. called What's in Your Walkman? And, and you were so like you were uh offering so many so many cool um recommendations that that, that you were listening to at the time because you uh-huh. you, you already said you love to to listen to so much music um yeah. so yeah I, i would love to bring that little section back for for, for this uh special occasion now sure. that I, now that i have you back on um uh, this uh talk on this podcast um yeah So what I mean, have you what have you been listening to lately? <laughs> just as we were talking, I opened up iTunes on my computer. As to date when it was put into iTunes, and I have at this count 17,688 songs on <laughs> iTunes. So recently I've been listening to a, a group called Red Velvet, which is a K-pop band. Fant- just a fantastic group with really phenomenal writers and producers. And, and that's, a, that's a type of music I listen to for production ideas all the time. Uh, you know, K-pop for the most part, the their song structures, melodies are way more complex and sophisticated than, than Western pop. Uh, so it's great for ideas. And I just love this stuff. It's just, I like the, the attitude of the younger musicians and the younger sound and the the just the vibe the up-tempo feel of it all and i know a lot of musicians i tell that to they think oh it's horrible it's you know really produced and that's yeah, fine but i it's if it's good i like it you know as simple as that uh the other thing i listened to uh uh silvana estrada she put out she's a mexican singer uh great vocalist she actually did a jazz album a couple of years ago which is killer she just put out a new album i've been listening to really phenomenal voice and she writes all her own material uh plays and that's that's one of the ones i was listening to for this album where i heard you know some of the different instruments they were playing you know the charango and the uh uh Uela and everything so i'm listening to her um uh oh i you know i got the new tiger moth tales you know uh peter jones uh song of spring i bought that one i haven't listened to it too much but i love his stuff uh you know he's just He is phenomenal. So I, I like everything he does too. He's, he's such a great writer and a singer and everything. So I've been listening to that. And then I'm listening to an old album by a group called Wilco. It's like an alt rock band from the States. I like them. Uh, then there's a couple other K pop groups. And then uh, let's see. Uh, oh, the new Tears for Fears album is really good. Really good. Tipping Point. I've been listening to that a lot. It's, you know, because I haven't put out anything in years and years and years. And a lot of times when groups come back and they get older, it just doesn't work out. But they have not lost a step. The, the, that's a great album. Um, and listening to another K-pop artist named Taeyeon, who's a singer. I've posted a couple of things on my Facebook about her. Great voice, great production and songs. Uh, oh, I got the new Jethro Tull album. The Zealot Gene. There's some good stuff on there. Yeah, I Oops. haven't. Uh, to, to be honest, the 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 new Tears for Fears album I wanted to check out as well. I need I need to get yeah. to that. But um, I have to admit, I was reluctant to check out the Zealot Gene because there's there's been some mixed reviews. <laughs> I you didn't know, I dare know, to dive in yet. <laughs> I did. I didn't see any reviews, but I just saw someone on Twitter, someone who's not even a music guy. Posted. Oh, I just heard the new Jethro Tell album, and it sounds killer. He's like a pop writer. I said, "Oh, okay. I'm gonna go check it out." I haven't seen any reviews about it, but there's a lot of good stuff on it. There was a there was a couple of times where I wasn't crazy about the stuff Ian Anderson or like Jethro Tell did that uh, Thickest of Brick Part Two, which I wasn't crazy about. But this one, there's some really good song, really good songs on it. Um, so it's oh, and, okay. I'll, I'll, this is the last one I'll mention. Another one. Uh, Wilder, Wild, I'm not trying to pronounce it. Wilder Run, W I L D E R U N. Their new album, <laughs> Epigon, yeah. killer, killer album. I'm I'm a huge Opeth fan, and they remind me yeah. a little bit of Opeth, but that album's really good. It just came out a couple weeks ago on uh, 
I, also I, on Century Media. Yeah, I'm just wearing my Opa shirt. Oh, I didn't even see that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And, yeah. and 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 we had we had Evan Berry from from Wilder Run uh, on 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 the Proc Talks. Uh, yeah. the, at the very beginning of the year in January. Oh, it's a great, just a so great epic. album. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is. And at first you hear it and you think, oh, this is going to be another one of these, uh, you know, new metal type of dark, low tune kind of things. And all of a sudden they're breaking into these, uh, you know, acoustic instrument uh, interludes and all sorts of really inventive melodies and uh, production ideas. So, yeah, that's a, that's a killer album. I've been listening to that a lot. Um you know, I can go. I can go this list forever because, again, I have seventeen thousand plus. If you go far, you know, farther enough. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's probably the reason I've been listening to a lot lately. Those right there. Maybe, maybe I'll uh, rephrase my question. And is there is there any um, any old stuff that you you've been uh, getting back to recently and re-listened again? You know, I listen to a lot of times. What I'll do is on the weekends, especially. I listen to music constantly. I watch very little TV. I just more and I'm listening to music. Uh, if I'm driving around, it's probably something more up tempo and pop. But on a Sunday morning, I'll just go to my playlist for classic Prague, for example, and just hit shuffle, you know, whatever comes up. So, you know, this weekend I ended up listening to uh, Selling England by the Pound again, which is one of my favorite albums of all times. Uh, I, there's all sorts of stuff I listen to. Let me just see what else is on my, my playlist from there. But, um, oh, there's this band Dream Academy. Remember Dream Academy? Life in a Northern Town? That is uh, an, a name that doesn't ring a bell, I have to admit. <laughs> yeah, they were, they came out in the 80s. They had one hit. You might reckon it was a big MTV hit. But it was, it was, that's a really cool album. I hadn't heard that in forever, but it popped up and I listened to that. Um, uh, oh, the new, well, that's a new, the new Deep Purple album, Turning to Crime. I like there's a lot of good stuff in that. It's all covers. Uh, Taylor Swift, a lot of her. I'm trying to think if there's anything class, classic I've written, but um, classic rock and pop. Let me just go to this section here. Um, uh, let's see. Fleetwood um, Mac, Gene Clark. Uh, Steely Dan, I've listened to a lot of that, a, a lot of Steely Dan stuff. And the other one, Tom Petty had an album out called Wildflowers and all the rest, which mm. is a, a great, again, it was a remaster. It came out like 25 years ago. <laughs> so yeah, I just listened to, again, just whatever. So, so when, when, you, when, when you hit shuffle on the playlist and you, you said you, you um, last weekend or so, you listened to uh, Settling England by the Pound again, when you hit yeah. shuffle and, and uh, maybe one song hits that particular mood of that uh moment will, will you go and maybe put on the album does that happen well, yeah well exactly what happened because when it, in shuffle the first song in the album came up and i i thought well i haven't heard i haven't listened all the way through in a long time so i just took the shuffle off and listened to the whole album <laughs> it's, it's probably one of my top you know two or three favorite albums ever by anyone of any period so <laughs> that is, it's so good. So yeah, I listened to that, but I've, I've got, I probably listened to that album a thousand times over the years. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's, but it's, 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 it's great uh, to, to, to have prog music still alive and kicking right. Uh, after all those years oh, and, yeah. and, and proclaim dad multiple times uh, over the years <laughs> by oh, some, I was... by some writers. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there was there was a time I was in the seven in the late seventies. I was in a prog band, and all of a sudden, when the eighties hit, uh, that was just a, prog was a bad word, and it just disappeared. You know, the uh, the yeses and the genesis went different directions, and everyone did and tried to fit in with the, you know the new music of the eighties. And there was still a prog scene, but it was before the internet, so it was done by uh by mail and magazine and, and fan you know fanzines and stuff like that so there's still there are still groups happening then and then obviously toward the end of the 80s and early 90s it picked up again well really like the mid 90s because all of a sudden the internet came about and all the prog fans started to find each other and find out hey there's this other you know there's these other groups out there 
who were doing Prague I never knew about. And you might be one guy sitting in a small town thinking you're the only Prague fan left on the planet. And all of a sudden, wow, there's all these other people and all these other groups. So it just exploded again at that point in the 90s. It's, it's been going strong ever since. So, yeah, yeah. 80s, 80s was definitely kind of a, a low period for Prague. <laughs> well, for me, for me, it is more, more, more a bit of like, you know, reading reading stuff from that era is like yeah kind of digging digging up a little bit in in digging into the history uh, into yeah. the music history also like the beginning of the 90s with the grunge era i think I, right I, I i i saw also articles when the that there still prog was like yeah not fashionable <laughs> right and you would still have in the 80s you would still have bright spots you know marillion came out it was got big in the 80s and you had uh and yes even though they put a couple albums out even though some of them were more poppy there were some great prog moments in some of those in the trevor raven era yes yeah uh and every once in a while you'd find some you know something would pop out you know and rise above the uh you know the, the big pile of everything else yeah. but it didn't really i think start really taking hold until i think in the mid 90s yeah i Again. think i think the beginning of the 90s was also like the the the, the start of the prog metal um movement right. With Dream, Dream Theater, Dream and Theater. Uh, yeah, like yeah. Psychotic Walls, and 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 all those great bands that kind of uh, like looking back as a kind of music historian. Yeah, uh, it 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 looks for me like in the end of the '90s there was like the scene was really brimming with a lot of U.S. American prog metal bands as well. Right. Um, with with some some of the labels like like. Uh, Lisa's Edge and and Lion Music or like, yeah, like metal, really, metal Blade, yeah, yeah, yeah re, re, really. Um, and 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 of course Dream Theater and and Face Warning and and all those bands. Um, Queen Queen Strike, Queen yeah. Strike from yeah, from the yeah. from the first wave of progressive metal. Um, starting sure. to 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 get to gain some some bigger audience and now. Finally, Dream Theater also won a Grammy, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I'm, actually, I, I'm actually a Grammy voter. So I voted oh. for Dream Theater in that category. You know, it's like, uh. finally, something <laughs> I voted for, you know, in one of the metal <laughs> rock categories, finally won a Grammy. Because I'm always voting for these obscure things no one else has ever heard of. But it's like, cool, Dream Theater won. Great. So it's it's all good. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. The new Pattern Seeking Animals album, Only Passing Through, is out since last week already. Uh, or when this episode will drop, it's going to be out one mm -hmm. and a half weeks already. And right. uh, you guys out there can listen to it everywhere and you can buy it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but you can also uh, follow Pattern Seeking Animals on the social media channels. And um, yeah, you can also follow us, of course, if right. you don't do that already. <laughs> yeah. And um, easy to remember with Pattern Seeking Animals, no matter if it's Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, the, the username is PS Animals One, the number one. So it's the yeah. same. It's the username that's the same on uh uh, you know twitter whatever so yeah yeah when when I, when i need to when i'm doing you know these social posts with any article or whatever i'm i'm putting out and and i'm posting it on all the different channels right. and right. and 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 then, and then I, they have i have to search on every channel where uh, if there's a different spelling or a different yeah uh a tag handle for that band on that on instagram or whatever it's it's really annoying, especially if you have to tag like 40 bands for a playlist. Oh, yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, I just decided when we were starting this to make everything the same so it would be easier for people to find. And the actual phrase pattern seeking animals was taken as a user, as a um, domain name. So I thought, OK, we're just going to come up with something which will work across all of them to make things. Because I've gone through the same thing, trying to find bands on Instagram or whatever. And there's 19 different names, you know, similar to the band. Oh, which one is it? So, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, uh, thanks, John. Uh, always a pleasure talking to you about music, about Prague and, and everything. And hope to talk to you again uh, when the, the next, next album the next <laughs> album drops, right? <laughs> Any anytime. Yeah, I'm working on the next one as we speak. So so we'll see. Wonderful. We'll and see all, 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 all you people out there who have the 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 chance to to catch them live at Ross Fest uh, or Cruise to the Edge. Yep. Dude, I guess it's gonna be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah.
That's it for today. Uh, Very good. Thank you guys out there for listening. And as always, take care of yourselves and your loved ones and keep spreading that prog love. The Prog Talks, produced by the Prog Space. Main host, Rune Belsvik-Reynos. Produced by Rune Belsvik-Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Zach Munovitz. This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week.